My name is um, Nyara Zichibaya and I'm an artist. I've been an artist for the past 21 years. Well, I, I started off in this neighborhood, uh, the same neighborhood I'm working from, a few blocks from here. So um, I'm one of those um, few people who believe that everyone is born an artist and I feel like um, it is up to them to nurture their skills. I was very lucky to meet some art enthusiasts along the way, uh, namely Kit Sendai and Bethold Moyo. There are so many others that I met along my journey who, who encouraged me to, to see art as a profession. And so I remember um, Keith had just had gone to South Africa and he bought this uh, huge book that was uh, filled with uh, photographs from Namibia and um, I was fascinated by this tribe, the Himba tribe. I was so moved by uh, the, the, their earth colors, the, the tones that were on their skins and I don't know, I, don't, I, I, I could relate the first time I saw it and um, I felt like giving it a, a try. So I painted other different pictures, we shared a few images and one of the images that he gave me from the book was the Himba, the Himba bride. And um, I, 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 I made an attempt and I, I was surprised by how quick people responded to my new style of painting. I was impressed because I, I painted three Himba portraits and um, they sold within a week. And I felt like if I'm going to be a professional artist, this might be, might as well just be the way to go about it. So I was back in the studio and I started working on, uh, there wasn't much to research on, there wasn't much of internet. Um, internet was there, but we're not exposed as much as we are now. Uh, remember, this is uh, sometime in 2003, three or four thereabout. We didn't have fancy phones, we didn't, we, we relied on internet cafes and... Yeah, well, the journey, the art journey has been quite an interesting journey. Um, it's, it's something that has uh, got mixed experiences. And one of the uh, things that I remember most about my journey is how hard it was at some point. But I, I didn't feel like it was hard then, but reflecting now, it was a difficult journey. I needed someone to mentor me. I needed someone to tell me how difficult it would be at some point. But because my enthusiasm had grown so much, I, um, I think I was, uh, I was strong enough to, to face the tide. Um, I started off in 2000. And I had long gotten interested uh, in art since primary school. And in 2000, I was about to finish my O level. And my, I remember my dad was against this. This was one of the most difficult things for me to do. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't freely be an artist or express myself or work because we were not at par with my dad. He was... Um, it was against the whole idea of uh, art being a profession. So I remember that was one of the most difficult things. As I got into the world, I realized that there was so much I needed to learn. I needed to learn a lot about marketing, a lot about the kind of art that would interest people. And I remember we, me and Keith were very close buddies. We would use scra scavenge for paints. And, and materials to paint on and brushes and we had no money and no clue what was needed at that time. So we used anything. We used to use matchsticks, chew them up and turn them into brushes and paint on cardboard, you know. And anything was paint. All sorts of pigment would, pigments would be mixed and, and would just, you, you would just start painting. So after meeting Bethel Moyo, I, I remember him introducing us to a whole new dimension of art. Um, it was the era of acrylics. <laughs> so we started painting on acrylics and we're using this calico material, cheap material. We had to paint um, some PVA on it and 
that's the only way we would get it to be workable on and it sustained us for, for quite a while. I started selling my first few pieces in Arare around 2000 and I think it was 2001. And I think, I think what helped me the most was my dependency on my parents because um, I, I mainly depended on them to take care of me food wise and rent wise. Um, I, I kept on working. I, I, I don't remember when I ever wavered. I kept on working through the hard times and the good times and some good times would be really good and some bad times would really be discouraging till I started selling some of my work in South Africa and Botswana and, and Victoria Falls. I sold a lot of work in Victoria Falls. That was one of my places that got me all the exposure to the world because um, uh, a lot of uh, my clients became foreigners and you know once you get a bigger clientele you're forced to to up your game so that's when I felt like my my game changed a little bit there. I, I started off uh, painting everything anything and everything and um, I remember I used to love landscapes so much and I would, I would paint I remember I would paint anything, man. So um, I painted a lot of landscapes and townscapes, and and I think it was the time when I started selling my work in Victoria Falls that I discovered a secret about um, what people fall for when their idea of art when they are traveling. And I discovered that art is something that is relatable to the experience you've had. And the African experience has got a, a, a diverse um, flora and fauna mm. referring to wildlife. And as, um, as most of my clients move around, they get to meet some, some of these different sorts of tribes and, and systems and cultures. And, and that moved me to want to be a souvenir artist, someone who can uh, make my art relate to my environment. The news spreads like wildfire when you work with one artist and that artist becomes um, becomes a, a practicing artist, a professional artist and when, when, when people start asking how they develop their skill it always, in most cases, it always leads back to the studio. So in, in a way I don't feel like I wake up every day to say I'm changing the world but I do wake up every day to, to, to just go and paint as an artist. And then I meet some, some upcoming artists along the way. And I've had the pleasure of meeting quite a lot, quite a lot of artists. And I've worked with so many, mostly young people. Um, this is a, a difficult trade. And we mostly rely on each other to, to be like stepping stones. And, and for, for the uh, artists that have been around long enough, this is not an advice, but it's a call for help. There's so many people who want, who are looking for guidance, who are looking for, for someone to hold their hand. So I believe that you should always leave the door open. This is to... to to the senior artists, of course, and to the uh, uh, biggest players, the galleries, give these young people a chance. Uh, it's not it's not easy for anyone to just become big. It's not uh, an easy thing to wake up big. Uh, you need an opportunity. You need a chance to sell. Of all the names that I feel like I, I can I can mention, I've got so many boys that I've met in the past. I'm going to talk about uh, my my recent encounters with uh, I think it's two of my boys who were former members of the studio. Uh, there was uh, Brandon Alfredo and Carol Combirai. There was Carol. Uh, he, he was uh, he's he's into wildlife now. He likes painting dogs. And there was Brandon. Brandon, I feel like is uh, the balance between wildlife and tri tribal paintings. I've had to give them a little bit of me 
and they took the good and they left the bad. If, if ever you're going to be an artist in the long run, your attitude must be in the right place. You must be patient. You must be hardworking. You must have a lot of all the positive vibes. So if I'm to meet a new and upcoming artist, the first things that I, I always look out for is the attitude. I look out for the character in an artist because when, when the hard times hit, character is all you have.